this morning i felt the lord gave me a word um after uh, this week i've been praying and asking the lord and i've been having some highlights here and there but i felt very strongly to talk and re-emphasize and you can write it down if you're habit of taking notes uh, uh, this is the topic I want to talk about. Uh, prayer works. Prayer works. And uh, let me just pray with you before we start because uh, this is a subject, a least uh, embraced subject by the body of Christ because prayer is sometimes considered as monologue, not necessarily a, a dialogue. So let's continue to pray. Holy Spirit, I need you. They need you. We all need you. We are not here to hear a voice of a man through Zoom. We are here because you are here. We need you to speak to us. So use me, Lord, for your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Wonderful church. Uh, this morning, uh, if you are habit of taking notes, write it down. Prayer works. And uh, recently, you all might have... Uh, I uh, read the news of what happened in 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 the in United States with all the uh, uh, the ban on the abortion, the Roe versus Wade, and I want to read a scripture uh, from uh, the Old Testament, but also a couple of scriptures from the New Testament, so that it gives you a little bit of perspective of where we are going. Uh, but let me read this statement, like John Wesley said this. A family altar will alter many families. A family altar will alter many families. And that's what we will be meditating on today. How we can be as a family, go and be in that place of constantly not giving up and trusting in him. And in, I guess in the year of 1973, that uh, this whole thing happened where uh, uh, I think it was Jane Rowe. Uh, she was from Texas and she wanted to make an, an abortion and the Texas prohibited. So she just continued her case all the way to Supreme Court and, uh, and Supreme Court said, uh, this is woman's right. No one can do it, you know, and, and that's been the case since then. And it's what's Roe versus Wade and, <clears throat> And the guy who fought for he actually even is not even alive anymore. But it's incredible to see in this last 50 years, the statistics says, the number says it's estimated anywhere around 40 million babies are murdered. And, uh, and it's ridiculous to see how a nation like America who embraced and founded on the principles of God could end up doing such things like this. And, uh, and and it has it had a dominoes effect, and uh, many European nations adopted this policy and still vibrantly even pay towards that. And uh, we need to we need to come to a agreement with the Lord if if the people of God, who are called by His name, who have not humbled, who have not sought sought His face, who are continually walking in the wicked ways of uh, whatever the enemy has planned for them. The Lord will not hear from heaven. The Lord will not forgive uh, our sins. And eventually, the Lord will not bring healing to the land. And uh, I do believe that COVID has brought a lot of challenges. You know, a lot of people passed away. And some of your friends or your family members, you might have lost. And during the pandemic, we witnessed tra tragedy upon tragedy. And they say estimated around 7 million, 7 million uh, people died out of COVID since the pandemic started. But I was reading the other day, uh, just, just from January until June, 6 million babies are aborted. Uh, and that's nobody talks, not even a not even a strip news that comes on the bottom of your you know television screen that says, uh, you know, so far seven million babies have been aborted. We don't even hear about it because why? Because the culture of this generation, the nations have turned from God and walking in the wicked ways. And that's why we see tremendous, tremendous chaos around the world and tremendous uh, 
uh, challenges uh, that sometimes you look at it and say, man, how come these things are happening? And uh, I want to take some few minutes uh, to, to highlight some scriptures, and then we will get into an action mode, an application mode. So I want you to be very actively involved. So it's not a time for you to just cross your legs and just uh, enjoy uh, next 25 30 minutes of a sermon or you know you can snooze and do something else this is a, something that actively we will be involved in so, as i told you i want to read a couple of scriptures the first one is from the old testament second chronicles 7 14 and it's most famous most quoted most uh, uh, spoken uh, out uh, outrightly by around the world in the body of christ this scripture if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways and then god says i'll do three things i will hear from heaven forgive their sins and heal their land if my people who are my people, you and me are his people, were called by his name. God took us, Second Peter, First Peter, I, say, I believe it says, he has taken us from darkness to light. He didn't come out from darkness to light. He took you from darkness to light. Shall humble themselves. That's the first requirement for any breakthrough in our life. We don't go with entitlement. We don't go with a sense of superiority. We don't go and say, Lord, you got to do this. This is my right. You go with a sense of humble. And by the way, God will never humble you. That's your job. That's my job. The Bible says, humble yourself in the hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. And sometimes we think, uh, uh, we make this prayer. <laughs> I have done this also. Lord, humble me. I mean, it, he can humiliate you if you are walking in pride because he is against those who are in pride. And it's incredible to see he's never made that statement like I'm against you except the fact that he says to you, like, if you are walking in pride, you, I mean, he, I'm going to be against you. So that's the first requirement the Lord puts it on us. He says, like, man, I, I really want you to walk in humility. And humility is not denying your strength. Humility is being honest with your weaknesses. Humility is not thinking less about uh, less of yourself is thinking yourself less. And so it's more God minded and less you minded. So that's the first requirement. He says, if you humble yourself, pray. I mean, look at those things. I mean, we, we want healing in the land. We want forgiveness. We want God to open up his heaven and pour his glory. But these two first things uh, we hardly do. Prayer has become an, not an habit or a lifestyle. It has become an event. We know how to pray when we pray for food. We know how to pray when we pray for people who are sick. We know how to pray when we sit in the car where we are going because of the traffic and the crazy driving you know and and we know how to pray we have all those tailored made prayers but the lord is like man it's not that it's the it's the attitude it's a lifestyle humble themselves uh, pray seek my face seek my face what is that like i mean do you go to church and you look at the cross intentionally or you go and look at the bible intentionally or you look at the sky what is seek my face seek my face it's your sincere heart towards him and say lord i am here all in for you i am here all in in for you and sometimes when we say seek my face uh, and it's it's basically it's not just attending a church prayer group it's all in when you are when you're all in for you there is no room for distraction there is no room for other things it's not like i'm praying and then keep watching my phone for the time i'm praying and still attending and sending silent text messages on the church you know we all do those kind of stuff but it's seek my face is a place where like man i am locked in with you my life it's right now locked in with you. So it's that's what the Lord is asking for, a sincere, committed heart towards him. And look what these four things, when we do, humble ourselves, 
pray, seek his face, seek his face and turn from the wicked ways. And look what the Lord is saying. I will hear from heaven. I will forgive you. And then the consequences of your receiving forgiveness has, bring, has brought a tremendous outpouring. That means uh, there is healing in the land. And I do believe this with all of my heart. The Lord is you know, hearing the prayer of the saints in India. And I believe the corruption will be one day become part of history. The violence, the dowry, the caste, the challenges that we see, all those, you know, the, the, the amount of right now within, in, 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 in Mumbai with all this, the politicians being swamped here and there. You know, they brought first to Gujarat. Now they are in Assam. Assam people are dying without food because of the... Uh, floods and lots of them are in challenges. These guys are in a, in a five-star rest hotel. I mean, I read on the other day, it's like 56 lakhs it takes them to reserve the rooms for all these 35 runaway MLAs. And it takes 8 lakhs per day to feed those 35 people. 8 lakhs, guys. You know, we feed with 5,000 people. <laughs> for for 5,000... 5,000 rupees or 6,000 rupees, we feed close to 85, 90 or even 100 people with biryani per meal. And these guys who are supposed to serve the nation, you know, are sitting there, taxpayers' money, paying all of that, 8 lakhs. And that's a conservative number. Somebody would have thrown it just for the media to shut up talking about this nonsense. That's what they consider. You know, we don't know the bottom of it, how much they have paid and what happens behind the scenes and all those alcohol and other issues that, I mean, I'm not speculating, but that's what happens when you do those things. My brothers and sisters, when you read a news like this, I am very far from my country. When I read this news like this, I get two things. I get my heart is so like broken, but at the same time, my spirit is crying, Lord, do this. Do come with your kingdom. Come, touch your people. This is ridiculous to see on, the, on, on, on a day and age where we live like this. It's so ridiculous to see the amount of corruption, the amount of challenges people are going through. And that's what the Lord requires. The Lord requires that we humble ourselves. We seek his face sincerely. We pray. We turn from the wicked ways. He is willing to hear. He is willing to forgive. He is willing to bring healing in the land. I want to give you a small testimony. Uh, many years ago, it was actually uh, maybe in, uh, in 2007, the Lord took me uh, to uh, South Korea. And uh, when I was there, uh, I've been there a couple of times. And when I went to South Korea, uh, um, uh, this was the, I believe it was the first time I went in South Korea and it's, I landed in Seoul and I took a flight to uh, Jeju Island. It's one of the most iconic, uh, it's like the Hawaii of America. So it's, so it's, it's one of the paradise islands. People go there and I was single at that time. I wonder why the Lord took me there when I was single to a paradise honeymoon islands. But later I dis discovered that we were there for a, a gathering of maybe five, six hundred people. And uh, I remember uh, that was the time when the Taliban actually killed the 22 South Koreans missionaries who were working in Afghanistan. And, uh, and there was a very emotional movement and the body of Christ in South Korea, they all gathered together and they started praying and, and, and the prayer they prayed, it's not from the soul, it's not from, uh, from the emotions, they prayed from the spirit and they said, Lord, we are not shrinking back. They prayed Hebrews 10. They said, we are not shrinking back. We will move forward. And, and they prayed with the prayer. And I got goosebumps as I started. they started praying. They said, Lord, we will advance more. We will not shrink back. Because they understood 100 years ago, South Korea's economy was even poorer than India's economy. The, pay, the currency of South Korea was not worth nothing. But then 
this people started praying people started interceding they have prayer mountains all over korea 45 percent of south koreans are bible believing christians and they came from the fourth world to the third world in the matter of generation south korea it's now on top g20 yeah, yeah, you know, it's 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 one of the most powerful passports they have. South Koreans can go to America, Europe with no questions asked. Welcome to America. They'll stamp. Even you have visa and you go to America, the question they will ask you is, why are you here? You know, and that's my point I want to share with you. When my people, the Lord's people who are called by my name, when they pray, seek his face, humble themselves. The Lord brings healing to the land. Now, the benefits of South Korea is not only being only poured out for the Christians. You know, I was a few, few months ago in LA ministering to a, a largest South Korean church. It's got 5,000 people and they have a youth wing. They asked me to speak on three services on the youth wing. And <laughs> it's incredible to see what the Lord is doing with those people. My brothers and sisters, why I'm telling you the story? I'm telling you the story because of one thing. I'm telling you because when you start praying, when you start trusting the Lord, when you start saying, Lord, I am, I am not, I am tired. I am tired of just, you know, seeking. Uh, um, I'm tired of just praying in normal prayers. I want to go all in. And the Lord says, okay, when you are all in, locked in, into, in, with me in my heart, I will bring healing in the land. Amen. And that's what I want to share for the next 15, 20 minutes. And we will have some time of prayer and intercession along with that. Now, I want you to turn your Bibles to two scriptures from the New Testament. I want to read 1 Timothy 2. 1 to 3, and also Philippians chapter 4, 6 to 7. So I urge you, this is Paul writing, one to his protege, Timothy, a young guy who went to start a church among the pagan people. And then Philippians was also a Gentile a congregation. But God uh, allowed Paul to be in prison to write this letter that we can even read this after 2000 years. So I urge you then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercessions, thanksgiving. You see how many things he's mentioning. We'll come to that in a bit. And for made for all people. Somebody say all people or put it up in the chat. All people. And then he gives you a description, all people for kings, for all those who are in authority. And by the way, when Paul wrote, when Paul wrote, <laughs> when Paul wrote all people, uh, he, he was under the tyranny of Roman Empire. He was under the tyranny of people who said, you know, this uh, these people who are called Christians are a cult and we should get away with them. And it's it's almost like, man, you can't be a Christian uh, if you are uh, under the emperor of, of Roman uh, Roman kingdom. And Paul says, you know what? In the midst of all this, I want you to make a prayer. Not just a prayer, God bless him in the South in America. They say, bless your heart instead of cursing. They say, bless your heart. And it's not that. It says prayers, intercessions, thanksgiving, petitions for all people. And then he gives you a description, all kings, for those who are in authority. My brothers and sisters, I have heard Christians complaining so much about Modiji and not praying for him. And that is outrightly unbiblical to come and come unto you to your place like gathering and talk bad about our leaders, but not praying for them. And that we live peacefully and quiet for lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior. So when you pray for your authorities, let me ask you what it happens to God. It pleases God. It pleases him. And then Paul writes again, in, in, in he's writing in from the prison. Huh? This is not a, a place where he sits, uh, sips his, uh, you know, pina colada in a Copacabana beach, having a beautiful suntan and, and then enjoying the beautiful breeze uh, and in the beach. He's not doing any of those. He's in the most darkest, coldest, wettest, dirtiest, loneliest place in the prison. And he writes this and he 
says this, uh, do not be anxious about anything. We sit in the most comfortable place and we are sometimes anxious, you know, anxious, you know, if, 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 uh, if uh, the 4G become 3G <laughs> or the 3G become 2G, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, Present your request to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. My brothers and sisters, we're going to jump into, uh, into, into your time of prayer and intercession. But these are the five things I want to share this with you. OK, so. But we all know what are the main hindrances to prayer? Hidden sins, I've shared this before, so I'm not going to get into that. Um, distraction, which is the number one sin, I believe. And also busyness syndrome, especially for Christians. And they are so busy for God, but never have time to be busy with God in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So these are the five things Paul writes in those two phrases. And I'll put it up in the chat. Everybody can read. And it's the five uh, types of prayer you can pray to God. The first one is thanksgiving. And, and Paul says in Philippians 4, it says, uh, don't be anxious, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. In other words, uh, we can go to God with an attitude of complaint and say, God, you know, sometimes when people raise up from the bed, uh, they just complain. They say, oh, no. Oh, my goodness. I don't know how this is going to work today. I don't know what God has. It's the attitude of complaint. I think it was Rick Warren who said this. If you complain, you remain. But if you praise, God raise you up. And I want to ask you, and that's why I wanted to see if Manuel and, and for those who are others, on the microphone, uh, P, uh, Peter or Linu, if you can have your microphones, we're going to praise the Lord. We're going to thank the Lord. What is thanksgiving? Thanksgiving basically means, yeah, I mean, it's very simple. Giving thanks to what God has done in your life. It is so easy and uh, for it is so easy to complain. It is so easy to murmur. You know, it is so easy. And I, I, I used to listen to this guy. He's a Tamil uh, orator, but he's also a very uh, good comedian. And, uh, and he's not part of our faith or anything, but he said something I would never forget. He says, people always complain about, uh, uh, about gas prices. The petrol prices are increasing every day. So they go to bed with such a depression in their hearts. They go to bed thinking, oh no, tomorrow what's going to happen? Gas price, it's increasing. Petrol prices are increasing. What should I do? What should I do? They go with such you know, uh, anxiousness to bed and angry to the gas station. And when it is up, the prices are up because there was this time there was for 20 days consequently every day the prices were going up and he was like man people are so angry at those things but i want to give you a suggestion this is what this guy said when you go to bed you say to yourself tomorrow the price of the petrol will be two rupees more than the price I paid today. <laughs> so if it is 70 rupees, you imagine it's going to be 72 rupees. So when you arrive to the petrol bank next morning and it's only 71 rupees, you can be thankful in your heart. Oh, I saved one rupee today. <laughs> and I, I thought it was quite funny, but it's also very interesting that, <laughs> that you, you, are, you, you are preparing a heart of thankfulness. My brothers and sisters, why don't we take a few minutes and I want to ask brothers here to thank the Lord. I mean, if preferably if you can, if we can pray in English so others can also be participate of that so that, uh, so because this is a thanksgiving. I want to verbalize church. If if those who are on, on in the campus, but for those who are online, I want you to take the next 30 seconds to thank the Lord. Thank the Lord for your marriage. Thank the Lord for your wife. Thank the Lord for the children that is yet to come. Thank the Lord for the, for the family. Thank the Lord for the, the nation that God has put us in. 
thank the Lord for our leaders in the midst of crazy stuff. Let's lift up our voices. So all of us, what we will do in the next 30 seconds, uh, we lift up our voices and thank the Lord. And one of them from the microphone who has got the microphone, Emmanuel or, or Linu or Manat or anyone who wants to unmute yourself and you thank the Lord verbally, be specifically, you know, don't just pray it in your own language so we don't probably understand what you're praying. So you pray verbally and you say, Lord, I thank you specifically for that. And then we will move to the next one. It sounds good. Now, everyone ready? Yes, you can say amen on the chat. And for those who are there on campus, you know, say amen. So let's let's go for it, okay? Let's give thanks to the Lord. And the Bible says, thanks to the Lord all the time, amen? So let's thank the Lord. Lord, I thank you. Come on, church, everyone. Lord, I thank you. I praise you. I exalt you. I thank you for what you are doing in my life. I thank you for my wife, my children, my family, the church, the church family. I thank you for in the midst of all this chaos, you are still on the throne. I thank you that in the midst of confusion, you are the God of clarity. I thank you that in the midst of hypocrisy, that I can count on you because you are the real one. You don't change faces. I thank you in the midst of all the corruption. I know you can never be corrupted, bribed into. You are the God of justice. Come on, somebody now thank the Lord. Come on, open the mic and pray. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Father, loving Father. Mm. Father, we thank you. Yes. Pray, Father, Father, I thank yes. you for the good church that you have given me, the brothers that you have given me, Father. We thank you mm. for the workplace that you have given me, the chance to yes. people to heal them yes. from the ailments, Father. Father, so thankful for the opportunity that you have given yes. me to work in this institution which has a greater purpose father amen father we thank you for meeting so many beautiful people father yes uh, in my life father thank you for the family that you've given me who's taking care mm. of me till now father my parents my bro brothers father father i'm very thankful for the opportunity that you have given mm. me every day to live for you yes that's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You see, this is an attitude that God wants you to have all the time. He doesn't want you to have just on on event type. He doesn't want you to have this, you know, I give thanks, but, you know, uh, uh, but no thanks. <laughs> Not like that. It's it's an attitude. It's a lifestyle God wants you to have. And that's what Paul is writing. You know, don't be anxious about everything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with Thanksgiving, it's almost like, you know, you can't eat your burger without that mayonnaise or the ketchup that spread that, you know, it's going to be raw. Imagine you take a bun and you put a burger meat and you just start chewing it. It's 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 the same burger, but it has got no, no flavor in it. But when you pray the prayers with Thanksgiving, if you eat the burgers, you know I, I'm bringing this analogy of burger uh, because uh, I like food. I'm a foodie. So, and uh, imagine you add those. Uh, the mayonnaise, the ketchup, the lettuce, the tomato, this ingredients. That's that's what Paul is saying. You you bring this petitions and all those things, prayers, with thanksgiving, it makes your heart so glad. Amen. So that's the first thing uh, the Lord wants us to understand, you know, that thanksgiving heart. I'm a thankful person. I'm a grateful person. And uh, a grateful person worships God. A grateful person is bitter free person. A grateful person can appreciate God even in little things. Uh, amen. Number two, what Paul is saying, praise. Bring your praises. What is praise? Praise is, is something that we, we are so proud about what God is doing. And, uh, you know, we, 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 we sometimes we say, I praise you, Lord. I mean, I, I sometimes wonder, like, what are you praising God for? We say, I will praise you. Okay, praise me. The Lord is like, I'm waiting on you. 
you know i even worship you worship me you know we sometimes have the songs we sing it because it's beautiful and it's got a nice tune in it but god is like more than that you don't just say i praise you you praise you for what i mean i, I give you a couple of examples i praise god because he took me from dark light i praise god my grandfather was a hindu temple priest if i would have been born in that still i would be in darkness but he brought me into light i praise god that when i was 18 years old he gave me a call and he said charles you will be my ambassador he counted me worthy to be his ambassador to go into all the nations and preach the gospel i praise god that he counted me worthy to give me a family with beautiful wife and three kids i praise him that he has given me this family of purpose as why i am saying this because i praise him intentionally for what he has done now i want you to understand this if you are taking notes take it down very clearly we praise god for what he has done but we worship him for who he is amen we praise god for what he has done now i want you to for those who are in the chat you know and uh, i want you to take and for those who are in the campus i want you to take the next 30 seconds praise him intentionally you know praise him when i was 10 and i shared this testimony when i was 10 or 11 years old i got introduced to pornography through my bad friends and i was addicted for, for 10 years and the lord set me free i'm 45 years old now the lord set me i, I could say boldly for the last 20 two to 25 years the lord has given me a victory to walk you know on this area that doesn't mean you're not tempted or anything i mean you will have temptation but yielding to the temptation is what i'm talking about the lord has given me a victory over that life i shared this boldly with friends and brothers even in papa's house and other places why because some of you are struggling some of you are going through those challenges and you say god am i going to be delivered yes because the lord would deliver me can deliver you we praise him for what he has done we praise him for setting us free we praise him for giving us breaking this addictions come on church next 30 seconds lift up your voices praise him intentionally and maybe one of you open the mic and praise intentionally thank you jesus i praise you lord that india is no more going to be saying you know staying in the same condition i praise you for the for the development you have brought to india i praise you that the corruption is coming into light i praise you that still there are people who who, who can stand for the truth i praise you lord for even bringing aitas kadar 100 years ago to the vellur i mean what in the world that a lady could come i mean her father was there i understand but father i thank you i praise you for bringing people like that i praise you for my wife who said i i'm called to india to serve the poor and needy i praise you father that times that i want to throw in the towel and leave uh, but lord i praise you i thank you for the the never giving up spirit that you have put on my wife i thank you i praise you come on church now i want you to praise intentionally somebody unmute yourself or pray a 30 second praise prayer amen thank you lord yes thank you father i praise you once mm. again for my nation lord jesus yes lord, there's a lot mm. of corruption there's a lot of problem lord mm. your mm. mercy and your grace is still upon our nation lord yes the yes people are messed up lord your mercy mm. lord i praise you that even the covid situation came lord jesus you are mm. faithful to us lord jesus we praise yes. you for your wonderful uh, the miracle things that even each and every family yes. each and every people yes. lord you showed and you poured amen. your love upon every people lord amen. jesus you're still alive I, amen I amen that, lord, amen families even though we have lord go through any uh, we, uh, most of things lord jesus but you protected and you, you provided yes. and you gone before us lord Amen. and uh, thank you jesus for that we praise you for that lord jesus Amen. we praise you for all the wonderful provision lord that you did Amen. many Amen. many people lord jesus lord yes. we heard a, a lot of news a lot of families a lot of yes. that lord uh, 
gone through a lot of stuff, Lord Jesus, but Lord, mm -hmm. you're faithful. We are praising you for that, Lord yes. Jesus. We are praising for the churches, Lord Jesus, Lord. Yes. You, you, you awaken their spirits, Lord Jesus. That Amen. That's correct. That's the, uh, very Lord correct. Jesus. Amen. So pray, uh, Lord, uh, uh, Lord. Yes. Lord, do your greatest work, Lord Jesus. We yes. praise you for that, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you for everything, Lord Jesus. Your faithfulness yes. and your love and your care. For yes. Yes. Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, Paul is saying, you know, all of us in a prayer mood, okay? We are on the teaching mood, hearing the word, prayer. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's in the same place, you know? So we, we are not switching. We are not moving from program to program. So Paul is like, man, come inside the presence of God, but do like this. Enter with thanksgiving. Even David says, like, I will enter the gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Now, it's, it's the lubricant of the prayer, you know, and God doesn't want you to be a complaining, a depressed intercessor. God wants you to be in a happy intercessor. Put it on the chat or write it down on your notes. I am a happy intercessor. Amen. Can you say this with me? I am a happy intercessor. I'm not a depressed intercessor. Lenu, repeat this after me on the mic. I am a happy intercessor. So on behalf of the people, I am a happy intercessor. Amen. I am a happy intercessor. That's who you are. You know, sometimes we intercessors, we are like, oh no, I remember being in Vivam, uh, this particular base, I will leave it unnamed. And this lady will lead us in intercession. Two things happens. I feel like I'm going to receive an anointing to sleep <laughs> when she leads in intercession. And I also feel so depressed because she always says things in such a way that, man, there is no hope because the highlight is not God. It's the devil. What the devil is doing, what the enemy is doing. I'm like, my goodness, devil is a created being. I didn't have that revelation that time. I thought devil and God are on the opposite end of the same and, uh, you know, poles, uh, but I later realized there is no match for God. These guys are created, fallen, defeated, no feet, excuse my pun, you know, defeated person. <laughs> Amen. So when we pray, we are happy intercessors, happy intercessors. So what does that mean? That doesn't mean we'll be juggling and singing and, and have, you know, it's the happiness that comes from the blessed of those, the uh, Sermon of the Mount where, they, where uh, Jesus mentions happy is the one that comes from inside. Okay. Now Paul says, now as you do this, you know, you come inside, you are thankful to the Lord, you praise him for what he has done. Now bring your request. Now church, I want you to be sincere. What is your request? I have some request to the Lord. I say, Lord, still my country has got three to five percentage of Christians. This particular city had an exposure of Bible and the message of the cross for more than 100 years. This particular city, guys, will look. And the city is growing every day, expanding left, right, center, everywhere and it's got almost 850,000 people but Lord still very handful of people only follow you if you take the entire Bible believing followers of Jesus there is not even 10% in our city you know, the Bible, they have made this research in South Korea. Again, I bring South Korea as an, ins as an example. They said there is something called tipping point culture. If 20% of any people group in any culture start believing to do some things different and start believing, the culture will tip, it will change. And South Korea witnessed it from a downtrodden, poor you know, junkyard to a place where prominence, healing in the land. Singapore was a swamp of Malaysia. Nobody wants to go there. It's a swamp. It was nothing until President Lee said, he took the principles that is in the Bible and he said, if you follow this, in the next 40 years, we will be on the top 10 nations. 
and it's got 16 to 25 percent of Singapore population are Bible believing Christians. Why I'm telling you this? We bring our request to God. Lord, I bring my city, Vellur, before you. Maybe you're from another city. Fine, but God has put you here. Let's bring our request to God and say, God, after giving thanks, after praising him for what he has done, but bring your request to him and say, Lord, still, you know, one of the things that I believe this with all of my heart, when God brings healing, and this, I've read this, and it, is, it, has, it has been proven very importantly by major, uh, uh, you know, climate uh, uh, researchers, the climate zone of Singapore and the climate zone of Chennai and Velour are almost the same. But we are six to seven degrees more hotter than Singapore. And we get 50% less rain than Singapore. And the reason they said it, because everyone who buys AC in Singapore, the government notes that person, address, name, and all those things. And government intentionally planned seven trees in Singapore. So it's a jungle. It's a, it's a, it's a most high sophisticated jungle, but it's surrounded by green. I, imagine this. You know, in Papa's house, in the campus alone, we have, I, I don't know how many, a few ACs are hanging around there. <laughs> and the government makes a note of that and plants seven trees. And that's why if you go into the CMC campus, it's two degrees always cooler than the temperature outside the campus. Yes or no? Come on, church. Why I'm telling you this? If my people humble themselves, pray bring our request to god god don't just pray god bring people on sunday that's a religious prayer then what they do on monday to saturday he doesn't care pray to god request him lord you know my, uh, my nation is in trouble they are you know they, when they say if you take dug a feet of sand from the river bed it takes 100 years to bring back to that level you know, we didn't dug a feet of sand from the river in Palar. They dug 20 feet. You think about it. You do the math. Trust the Lord. Now bring your request. I don't know what request. I have these requests for my country. I have these requests for my city. I believe one day, you know, my wife come from a very small town here in Spain. It's a beautiful town. And they have a river called River Hebrew. And along that river, Hebrew, they have like a walking track. You can take your dogs for a walk. You can take your cycle walk. You can take uh, your old people. And then they have a little park around there. And I'm saying, man, around my Palar River, there is a beef cutting shop there. And all the, you know, <laughs> when I think about that, and people are bringing their dead bodies and burning there. And I said, Lord, you could make this in my city, a city where the presence of God not just dwells on Sundays, but also manifests his glory. Beauty, guys, I want you to understand this. Beauty comes from the Lord. Amen. Beauty comes from the Lord. Sometimes we like, oh, man, I. That's why we Indian fellows go to Switzerland to make movies for one song, four minute song, you know. Why? Because there is no beauty in our streets. We need to pray. Now bring your request to the Lord. I have given my some of my weird requests. Maybe you have a different request. Bring it to the Lord. Lord, next 30 seconds. Come on, church. We don't have time. Lord, I bring my request. I want to see my city become beautiful, clean green and beautiful lord in singapore they they invented new mosquitoes that kill the mosquitoes that bite and they have mosquitoes that doesn't bite it's a mosquito free city lord today we are beating ourselves after six o'clock in the evening i bring our request to you lord help us help my city Church, get out of your church religious background and start praying for in a holistic way. Lord, I pray that you will bring 
clarity. My children have to walk so long. Mothers have to walk so long to bring clean water. And Lord, today, uh, the basic rights of drinking clean water, it's a luxury for many people. And Lord, more than 60% of diseases can be controlled if we have a clean water. I bring that request to you. Vellur will have a clean water. I bring that request to you. Vellur will be a, 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 a concrete jungle, but it will be in the midst of a green forest. I bring Vellur. It will change. The people of Vellurians would love to say, I love to live in a city like Vellur. Not like, man, I'm bond is finishing. Two more months. Can't wait to get out. Father, I pray. Bring my request. Come on, somebody unmute yourself. Pray for the city. Come on, church. 30 seconds. Yeah, thank Heavenly you. Father, I bring mm. this to you. Yes. Lord, Lord, thank you for the small time that we could spend there, Lord Jesus, and how mm -hmm. you have refreshed our souls, Lord Jesus. Oh, Rathilama. Beautiful streets to beautiful places to eat, Lord, for the beautiful mm. company that we received, Lord. A beautiful mm. church in our people, Lord. I thank yes, you, Lord. Papa. The way you have dealt with us in that place, Lord Jesus, you have di disciplined us, Lord Jesus, yes. and that discipline has helped us to be in the place of responsibility here, Lord. Yes. Father, I pray for the similar spirit for those who are seeking you, Lord Jesus, yes. who hunger and thirst for you, Lord Jesus, yes, Lord. that they will find in their desperate time of needs, and Lord Jesus, they will find you in well, Lord. Yes. They will yes. find your people, Lord, people who are filled with your Holy Spirit, your, with yes, your spirit Lord. and your knowledge and understanding, Lord, mm. that they will not be judged, Lord, mm. but they will find rest and peace, yes. Lord. They will find acceptance in that place, Lord Jesus. Yes, yes. Lord, I pray that, Lord, as our, our mm. team, our young, our young people from our church, Lord, they go out, Lord, they reach out to many, Lord Jesus, that, Lord, the hungry souls will receive it, yes. Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord how many have heard your word lord jesus yes. but you still wait for that one to turn up lord jesus yes. you're still waiting for them lord father yeah man. Lord, in similar time i pray for the place that you have put me and atna lord jesus father mm -hmm. it, it just breaks my heart to see people dying of the treatable diseases here lord yes, jesus that's right Dying, Lord. Their souls are perishing, Lord Jesus. Yes. Father, I pray that, Lord, help yes. us to reach out to them, Lord. Help yes, us to Lord. come to a point where we say that the Lord loves you. The Creator yes, loves you. Yes, Lord. Father, I pray yes. that, Lord, in the, the previous days, Lord, we have shared to few people, Lord, Amen. that their hearts will turn, turn, Lord, to you, Lord. There Amen. are many who have received you in previous days, Lord. I don't yes. know, Lord, how they were influenced to accept you, Lord, but there was no yes. maintenance, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray that you will give us the spirit of maintenance, Lord Jesus, that yes. we reach out to those. We help them to make you understand, Lord, understand that you are the Lord who have created them and you yes. love them, Lord. Yes. Lord, I pray in this time, Lord, for, mm. for myself and my husband, Lord, Yes. That, Lord, we will have the spirit of maintenance, that we will seek yes. your face more. We will gain wisdom from you, Lord Jesus. Yes. In everything, we will depend on you completely, yes. Lord. Jesus. Yes, Lord. That uh, we will delight and we will seek your yes. joy, Lord Jesus. Lord, help us, Lord. Enable us to understand where we fit in your greater plans, yes. Lord Jesus, Father. We, co we commit ourselves into your hand. Yes, Thank Lord. you, Lord, that you have heard our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. So Paul is saying, hey guys, thank him. Praise him for what he is doing in your life, what he has done. Bring your request. Then he goes one step further and that gets even more intense. And he says, bring your petitions. In other words, the Greek word for petitions is intercession. <laughs> yeah. He says, stand in the gap now. Now it's no more like, uh, Lord, heal him. If it is not your will, it's okay. You know, you just, you are no more attaching. You know, you can bring your request without even being attached to that person. Now you are saying, bring your petitions. You're interceding. Now you are going one more step deeper. You're saying, I'm going to stand in the gap. I'm going to stand in the gap. And that's where it gets tough. And when, uh, you know, uh, this is where they say, when the rubber hits the road, you know what kind of tire it's made of, you know, and that's the reality. 
And this is where many people are like, man, maybe this, this is not for me. And that's why you will know if you are an egg or a potato. <laughs> you know, the egg and potato, uh, when they go through heat, both of them are transformed. The egg that is so soft, uh, when you go through heat, it becomes hard. Potato that is hard, when it goes through heat, it becomes like mushy, you know. And, uh, and that's what it brings us to a place. Like now I'm standing in the gap. Now I'm saying, Lord, I want you to do something in my city. I can't go with this. This amount of corruption, this amount of injustice, this amount of bribe. Guys, we still, we don't have... The, the permission uh, to run the school uh, because they are asking, first they ask one and a half lakhs, then they asked uh, one lakh, now they ask 80,000. And we told them like, man, we don't have, the, the taxes are around 55,000, but they want 25,000 rupees more on bribe. And we said, no, and we're holding on. You know, it's almost a year. You know, the papers are all ready. Linu went many times and he's like, we are holding on. We need to cry, God, you can do this, Lord. Do it. Stand in the gap. Now you're crying out. Stand in the gap and say, God, I want to see your kingdom come. I want to see. You know, the goal is not that we will become ultra modern like, you know, Western countries, that we will lose even the interest of God. And that's not my goal for my nation. The goal of my nation, for my nation, is to see that every, like Manat prayed, that every single individual person matters. Every preventable diseases, curable diseases, can be taken responsibility and say, God, you know, if you read the news, you know, they say, allegedly, you know, or it says mishap, lots of mishaps happens in our country that never existed in other places. We, had, we, we could have avoided, you know, this whole oxygen, uh, uh, the shortage could have been avoided when the pandemic hit us. But we need to stand in the gap. Lord, we are standing in the gap. You know, this when the floods come, uh, so many people lose their lives, especially in Assam. You know, what's going on right now? We need to trust the Lord. We need to stand in the gap that there are people, even Katrina, and Hurricane Katrina came in, in early 2000 in America. It wiped out the southern border completely. And they started something called uh, Hurricane uh, Emergency uh, uh, Team, something like that. It's They have a name for that. And they studied how it all worked. And they built a she shows that has got large walls that cannot beat the walls and the walls are almost like um you know 20 feet thick uh, that can never be, be penetrated and since then we never read such a big catastrophe in america because they studied they prevented church what is our role in in, in just coming on sunday and sitting there and giving our offering 500,000 or here 250 if you are miserable and uh, and say i'm going to be stingy on the offering you know and then move on or are you going to stand in the gap and say, God, I need your kingdom. I want to see these preventable things can be prevented. So the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ can be preached into them. Come on, church. Let's everyone now intercede. You have something in your heart to intercede. Don't hold back. Don't just say, oh, man, this guy is doing something. Now it's not the time to check your WhatsApp. Now is the time to stand in the gap and intercede. And maybe Linu or, 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 or uh, Emmanuel can pray an intercessory prayer for our nation. Father, we thank you. We intercede, Lord for my nation, Lord. We intercede for our leaders. Father, we intercede for the MLAs, MPs, and the amount of, Lord, here in Switzerland, a finance minister drives a cycle, parks a cycle in a train station, takes a normal train to go to the parliament. And Lord, here we are, the chairman, just a village chairman. And Lord, uh, he has uh, two entourages cars going before him. And he's got this humongous flag that is so ridiculously ugly on the top of his bonnet and driving to an office in village where this village people don't even have electricity, water and mere things. And Lord, I pray I intercede that this maniac things will stop, Father, in the name of Jesus.
are some announcements. If you have missed any of our sermons, you can watch them by logging in on Papa's House through YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes and Facebook. We have a family support program where we support single mothers and their children by getting provisions through finances and opportunities to earn a livelihood through small businesses. Every Friday, through our homeless feeding program, our team prepares and distributes food packets for homeless people in and around Velour. We would encourage you to join us in this program by either preparing or distributing food packets and also by considering making your generous contributions through your finances. If you consider yourself to be a part of Papa's house, then we would encourage you to send your tithes and offerings. But if you are visiting Papa's house for a few occasions and led by the Spirit and you feel that Papa's house has made a difference in your spiritual life and your connection with Christ, you could consider sowing a small seed through an offering. We would make sure it falls on the good soil so that it reaps a good reward from God. You can find the details of the bank accounts and Google Pay should you decide to send in your offering to us. We will intimate to you once we have received it. Also, here are the links on how you can reach and follow us.